just thank you to everybody out there in the Young Turks listening audience and everybody, every, every supporter from around the world. We know that you send your love, you send your compassion, and you send your prayers. And we can feel it here. There is strength on the ground here. There, we are in a very critical uh, time for not only for native nations and native nations uh, pre-existing prior and an original inherent right to determine our own destiny but the struggle has become so much more than just a native nation's right to clean drinking water which that struggle alone would, would sustain the fight here the tens of thousands of people who've come here in person from around the world who brought their sacrifice and their energy but it has transformed it has evolved to include the very uh, nature of representative democracy in this country in light of what seems to be Trump tyranny raining down on all citizens of this country the constitutional rights the civil rights and the human rights of every citizen every man woman and child and other in this country is at risk right now and we the Ocheti Oyate or the water protectors on the ground are the front line of that struggle. You see last night in airports all over the country, liberty flows from the front line and in the streets and at any place where Trump tyranny is threatening the rights of anybody in this country. This is the time that we have to stand together. We don't have a choice but to stand up. We know the power of peace. The power of peace does not allow us to back down. We stand here in an unarmed, non-violent way, in a peaceful and prayerful way. We support the wishes of the Standing Rock Nation to end the economic sanction that is the unprecedented, most militarized road blockade in North Dakota history. It has caused undue economic hardship to my native nation, the Standing Rock Nation. It is not warranted anymore. We commit to ceasing actions at the bridge. The governor of North Dakota, the then governor, Dalrymple, uh, has seen the benefits of his blockade play out in creating this hardship and in turning our own communities against the very people that we invited here who have indeed sacrificed sometimes their limbs, indeed their liberties, and up to including their lives. Over 600 people have been arrested here on the ground. People's rights have been violated. Morton County has not been held accountable. The governor has not been held accountable. And so we have always stood on these principles and we will not no cop has been harassed. No member of the law enforcement has ever been harassed out here. But we do have demands. And those demands are that the blockade be lifted, that DAPL leave the territory. Those are the primary demands. There are ancillary demands, including the right of Native nations to be free from state encroachment on our jurisdiction on our taxation and regulatory authority and now in North Dakota a bill was introduced even to revert back to a time of termination a termination era in 2017 it means that the the, the legal and international relationship that native nations share with the United States would be terminated and ended and the states would subsume regulatory civil and criminal authority over native people which is inconsistent with our birth rights it, they attempted it before and we were able to stop it back then but it, it would be a very it's going to be a very serious time and so we do need people to come but we need people to be self-sufficient we need people to be disciplined there are three camps south of the 1889 imposed border, but there are also people north of that border in the contested area, in the liberated zone, in the treaty territory where we have not asserted ourselves in over a hundred 
in 20 years. But it's, it's, it's a stand, it's a place where we need to assert ourselves. It is our birthright to provide for ourselves, to hold superior title in our own land, for instance, to assert an international character, to enter fair trade agreements, for instance, or to seek an international audience with consulates or, or other representatives of other nations. If you look into it, the United States is indeed imposing and oppressing us through legal, economic, and political means. The scope of that relationship is 500 years long, and it's, it's beyond the scope of, of this discussion. But just know, I, I'm an attorney. I'm a lawyer. I study this for a long time, and I understand the intricacies and the history of that federal Indian legal relationship based on the doctrine of discovery. And it's not right. Nobody wants to oppress native people anymore. Native people should not have to live in poverty in 2017. And that's why this struggle is more than just a native nation's right to clean water. It's so much more explosive than that. And it's critical that everybody pays attention right now because we're all gonna have to fight that fight. They're coming for you right now. They're coming for us right now. They're coming for immigrants. They're coming for brown people. They're imposing austerity, but it's cloaked in conservative values. A white supremacist was appointed to the National Security Council. These are crazy, crazy times. And we need to support each other around the globe. We, we can, to the extent we can sustain people north of the 1889 border in the contested zone where we are subject to a federal raid by the Trump administration where Trump has indicated and issued a directive to withdraw the easement and, and allow Dakota access to drill underneath the river. We would like people who are disciplined water protectors who understand those risks and understand that we have to be peaceful and unarmed and nonviolent. But it doesn't mean that we have to back down. We are still standing in that same spirit of prayer. To the extent that we can sustain you here, we will do that. But there are three other camps very capable of sustaining a growing population. And that fight is going to get real, really fast, because Trump is escalating the corporate violence that has already been inflicted on water protectors for the last eight months six months and so we we need support we need we need bodies and we need every like share tweet favorite everything that you can think of we need you to share our truths share our information because that's how we keep this struggle alive in an ideal world the ira governments would assert themselves in a strong fashion and negotiate the injustices that are being imposed on them by the state of North Dakota right now. It's we, not the state of North Dakota, it's the fascist republic. That's, it, it's, it's all one thing now, it yeah. seems. But <laughs> we, as treaty people, as original and inherent sovereign beings with a birthright in this hemisphere, are inviting people. So people are here at our invite. And indeed, the, the legal limits of, of what that treaty relationship is will be tested. But if we don't assert ourselves, if we don't test those boundaries, then we stay within that imposed poverty box that has existed for the last 100, 130 years. A box that I grew up in, a box that we need to liberate from. We will not stand for our children growing up in that same imposed poverty culture. And so we have to make a stand. And we, we don't want to impose ourselves on the community. We want to get this roadblock open because that's, that's an economic sanction. It's just the same as withholding rations 130 years ago. If we wouldn't sign whatever paper or agree to whatever dictate that, that the federal government wanted us to, they would just simply withhold our food. It was called the sign or starve era. Even then, only one out of 10 <coughs> Lakota or native people succumbed to that that uh, uh, you know, inhumane treatment. But we, we are definitely saying that this is, this is bigger than native nations even. The, the whole world is looking to us to stand up to the corporate conglomerate that is continuing to colonize 
every human being and even every natural resource through big finance, big extraction, and every institution that flows from those conglomerates who don't owe any loyalty to any country. They don't care about our country. They, they don't care about our lands or our waters. And we are really going to see who is the patriot here. Who really loves this land? Who is a, a true American or a true Lakota? Who really loves this water? Who respects the sacred sites and the sacred entities that, in, that have inhered here longer than we've been here? Those are the true patriots. And the people who would destroy that, who would commodify that and exploit that and put our people at unnecessary risk, those are the traitors. Those are the terrorists. And those terms are highly debatable and we're going to see that in a Trump tyrannical presidency. So we all need to be ready for that. And we, we don't want to impose ourselves on the community. We want to get this roadblock open because that's, that's an economic sanction. It's just the same as withholding rations 130 years ago. If we wouldn't sign whatever paper or agree to whatever dictate that, that the federal government wanted us to, they would just simply withhold our food. It was called the sign or starve era. Even then, only one out of ten <coughs> Lakota or native people succumbed to that, that uh, uh, you know, inhumane treatment. But we, we are definitely saying that this is, this is bigger than native nations even. The, the whole world is looking to us to stand up to the corporate conglomerate that is continuing to colonize every human being and even every natural resource through big finance, big extraction, and every institution that flows from those conglomerates who don't owe any loyalty to any country. They don't care about our country. They, they don't care about our lands or our waters. And we are really going to see who is the patriot here. Who really loves this land? Who is a, a true American or a true Lakota? Who really loves this water? Who respects the sacred sites and the sacred entities that, in, that have inhered here longer than we've been here? Those are the true patriots. And the people who would destroy that, who would commodify that and exploit that and put our people at unnecessary risk, those are the traitors. Those are the terrorists. And those terms are highly debatable and we're going to see that in a Trump tyrannical presidency. So we all need to be ready for that. You can see the American people are rising up. There's only so much tyranny that people are willing to take. And then they draw the line, whether it's on immigration, for people who consider this their homeland, whether it's uh, the ban on Muslims, what, you know, what, what it doesn't matter what it is, but there are injustices coming, austerity is coming, they're cutting Social Security, Medicare. People are going to be in an uproar. And thankfully, we have a system of checks and balances, but I think the people have been sleeping a long time. So the check and the balance that, that, that comes from people asserting themselves and being aware of their constitutional rights or their human rights, just just getting woke and staying woke, th that, that ethos hasn't been present in American society probably since the founders 240 years ago. But right now we have to recognize what's at stake and we have to stand up because we're facing tyranny right now. Reach out to any one of us. Uh, you can go to Last Real Indians and, and message there or uh, Sacred Stone. Also, I don't know uh, if Cheyenne River has a, uh, a Facebook, but we would prefer that you reach out, or if you can come self-sufficient, just come and reach out in person. But realize that you've got to take care of yourselves, and, and, and you can't expect to be provided for 100%. We'll provide the basics, you know, some, some food and some firewood. Uh, we have been blessed by your donations, your support, your compassion to be able to provide those logistics. So. But we, this struggle is going to continue. I mean, Trump is the president of the United States right now. 
If they back up on the easement, instead of denying it, they grant it, that pipeline company is gonna start drilling under the water. And so we have to have the resolve and the stomach for civil disobedience. There is no progress without struggle. And people out on this front line have been making that struggle for a long time, to the tune of 600 people being arrested. So yes, we are staying. If you can come and join us, please do.